Alex here with part 15 of the My Docket series on Corazon Real Estate. As my previous videos, please take a look at part zero if you haven't seen it yet. Um, with this video, what I think I'm going to do is break my rule a little bit and cover two replies instead of just one. I had a suspicion that the reply that we were going to cover was going to be extremely short because the opposition from Charles Chinichi had almost no law in it. So my instincts were correct. Took a look at the second reply, same thing. So the least I can do is uh, trim this down to just one video for both of these replies. And then we can get into the court's order and the Supreme Court appeal, which is what I think most people are interested in. But uh, yeah, I, I mindset really... I felt like I was wasting my time. I was filing a reply for the sake of filing a reply. I didn't see anything in the oppositions that had any merit at all. But as happens in Nevada and probably the other states, judges can go off the reservation. And as ridiculous as both oppositions were, the judge went off the reservation and I had to file a notice of appeal. Luckily, we have a good Supreme Court. The Supreme Court overturns his decision, sends it back to him. But we still have to go through the process and um, kind of just show you guys how it all works so you can kind of figure it out too. Uh, I didn't really mention my mindset except to say that I felt like this was kind of pointless and I guess that's the beginning and the end of it really. I mean that's how I felt at the time. Um, I was astonished when I got the order from the court but uh, we'll talk about that next video because that's going to be in the next video. All that being said, uh, let's take a look at what I have filed. Here we have the reply to opposition to motion to amend my complaint, standard introductory paragraph indicating I'm appearing in proper person, which means I don't have an attorney, and that I am replying uh, Charles Chinichi's opposition to my motion to amend. Points and authorities. Rule 11 sub B doesn't apply. The filing of a motion to amend is mandatory pursuant to Rule 15 sub A. So I'm trying to argue that his request for sanctions under Rule 11 sub B is nonsensical because the thing that I filed had to be filed because of a different rule. Um, I'm deferring to arguments as to the merits of the case in my opposition to motion to dismiss. And the I'm just basically underlining that the, the prima facie case for punitive damages has been made. And had I filed in justice court, damages in excess of $10,000 would have been waived, which is true. Filing in district court is appropriate as the net worth of the corporation being sued determines the amount of the punitive damages, which is also true. So. He doesn't like it, but there's nothing that he can do about it. This is how it has to happen. I'm denying the appropriateness of sanctions. The motion was not filed to harass. I'm denying all of the argumentative allegations that he's making. And then I'm uh, mentioning that his arguments in opposition are not substantively relevant to the motion before the court. Um, therefore, my motion to amend should be granted. Declaration, um, which is me indicating under penalty of perjury that all of the facts alleged in this document are true and correct. And I'm not sure that there are any facts alleged in here. It's just pure law. Uh, Rule 5 certificate, a certificate of service, which indicates this document was mailed to Charles Giannici. Request for submission, uh, submitting to the court for consideration the motion to amend, the opposition, and the reply. If you want to learn more about the request for submission, please watch my video on the topic, request for submission. Rule 5 certificate of service indicating this document was mailed to Charles Giannici. Here's the other reply to opposition to request for arbitration. Um, the same thing, standard introductory paragraph indicating that this is being filed in proper person, which means I don't have an attorney. Factual background. On November 19th, I filed a request for arbitration. The purpose of the filing was to prevent a delay in the case's automatic transfer to arbitration based upon the pending motion to amend the complaint by demonstrating to the commissioner that um, I was voluntarily waiving any damages in excess of $50,000. And the reason why is because the Nevada arbitration program um, cannot award damages in excess of $50,000. So it's similar to a small claims threshold, except instead of $10,000 at the time, 
it's uh, fifty thousand dollars again at the time i think those numbers have both gone up i think the small claims threshold has gone up to 15 or maybe 20k and i think the arbitration threshold has gone up to 75k maybe 100k i don't know for sure these things these numbers will change as you know we move forward in time <laughs> not in the case um what do we have here uh i he apparently construed my request as a motion and filed an opposition the opposition to the request for arbitration is problematic as it, as it potentially serves to confuse the arbitration commissioner, which may construe the opposition as a request for exemption. Such a request for exemption must be properly captioned as such and must outline as required by Nevada rule, Nevada arbitration rule five sub a, the grounds upon which the case is exempt and served upon the arbitration commissioner, both of which Charles Janici has failed to do. Furthermore, any such exemption from arbitration is now untimely as it would have had to have been filed within 20 days of the defendant's answer served on October 12th, 2012. Defendant also does not appear to understand what it is asking for, as it has repeatedly and consistently argued against the expensive litigation costs associated with the district court. And the purpose of arbitration is to minimize litigation costs by putting the case through a program with relaxed discovery and speedier resolution. This is also true in Nevada rule, arbitration rule 2 sub a. The program even goes so far as to place a cap on attorney fees in Nevada arbitration rule 16 sub e. Therefore, due to the lack of certification required by the rules, the now untimely filing of any request for arbitration, even if it were properly filed, the fact that the defendant's interests appear better served by arbitration and in order to prevent the arbitration commissioner's confusion and delay of the case's referral, I'm requesting that the court construe the defendant's opposition to plaintiff's request for arbitration as a request for exemption from arbitration and deem the request denied. Yeah, again, guys, the reason he filed an opposition is because he's just reacting he doesn't know what he's asking for. He doesn't know what any of this stuff is. He just sees me ask for something and then he just assumes that he has to oppose it, which is a very common thing that self-represented people do, which is not good. If you get a chance, watch my video on the topic uh, representing yourself. And I think there may be a more there may be a more on point video. It's gonna be somewhere in the legal nuts and bolts playlist. I can't remember the title of it, but this is something that I talk about is be careful with just going into reactionary mode. Uh, the declaration, um, again, under penalty of perjury, I'm, I'm certifying that all the facts alleged are true and correct. Rule 5 certificate of service indicating this document was mailed to Charles Chinichi. Next, we have the request for submission. This is, again, guys, just me submitting to the court for determination, the request for arbitration. And I'm also um, going to go ahead and mention again that if you haven't seen my video on the topic, please uh, watch my video uh, request for submission. Rule 5 Certificate of Service indicating this document was mailed to Charles Chinichi. Going into the aftermath, I filed four documents. They were all free filings, so I incurred $0 in costs. Uh, Charles Chinichi didn't file anything, so he incurred $0 in costs. I didn't have an attorney, so I incurred $0 in attorney fees. Um, Corazon Real Estate will eventually be forced to hire an attorney. They will most likely review these documents, and I imagine they won't spend more than 15 minutes on it, which at the rate of $250 an hour is going to come to $62.50 in attorney fees for Charles Chinichi uh, or Corazon Real Estate. As in my previous videos, feel free to post any questions you have down in the comments below, and I will see you guys next time.